There are three primary functions of modern American policing, and almost all action taken by police fall within one of these three categories. They are order maintenance, which includes maintaining community police and civility, public service, which is a catch-all category, and it involves any type of action in which citizens just don't know who else to call. And then there is law enforcement. There is some confusion between the name of the profession and the function of law enforcement. The name policing includes all three functions. Law enforcement simply refers to enforcing of the criminal laws and investigating crimes. Policing. There is a difference in the perception of policing versus what is the reality of policing. Order maintenance holds a co-majority place with public service in terms of the amount of time and resources that are allocated in police budgets. Order maintenance consumes time and resources. Public service consumes time and resources. However, law enforcement, the law enforcement function is viewed as the primary responsibility of policing. It is viewed by police officers as their primary role, and this notion of law enforcement is in fact perpetuated by departments. It's also perpetuated by the media in terms of the type of stories that are broadcast, the TV shows, and movies that are produced. 80% of the training in police academies is dedicated to teaching police officers how to engage in the law enforcement function. However, in reality, only 20% of police work is actually allocated to performing the law enforcement function. This is what actually draws men and women to policing as a profession. The stages of modern police development in America. The political era uh, was from 1820 to 1940. It was a very political time and police officers were actually chosen by who happened to be in office at that moment. Corruption was pervasive, it was tolerated, and there was a lawlessness to policing. Um, and there were a number of calls for reform in policing, which led to the professional era of policing. During the professional era, law enforcement officers or policing officers actually started to wear uniforms. Uh, they were recruited. They had to be screened, internal affairs divisions were established, and police officers began, began thinking of themselves as professionals. This is also the time period when police began to be isolated from the community. It was also during the time in America when people started driving more cars, police were assigned vehicles, and they could patrol neighborhoods uh, in the vehicle as opposed to on foot. The problems associated with the professional era led to the community policing era and the advent of the community policing philosophy. And the community policing era has lasted from 1970 through the present. And in the early 2000s, the Department of Justice, the Federal Department of Justice, invested millions and millions of dollars into community policing because it was seen as an answer to a number of problems that were still pervasive within police departments. Community policing um, involves some form of team policing, it involves bu building police community relations, and it's problem-oriented policing, and it was designed ostensibly to uh, solve the problem of social disorganization and address the broken windows theory. The days of protest is a minor era of policing, but it really is what led to the hold community policing as a philosophy for entire organizations as to programs. During the 1960s and 70s, of course, that was a period of social and political unrest in the United States. There was often conflict between police officers and citizens, between students and police officers, so it was a very dynamic environment in which police officers were not accustomed to operating. They did not know what the rules were for responding to these new situations that were arising on a daily basis. So also during this time, people started to ask, what could police do and what should they be doing? This was a time when a new paradigm uh, began to develop where police officers were no longer being reactive to situations in communities and in the nation, but started to move to a 
proactive model of policing. How do we stop crime before it starts? How do we build relationships so that they do not erupt? There was key legislation enacted at the federal level during this time that also uh, began to impact how police departments operated. There was a 1964 Civil Rights Act that increased the number of minorities who were um, in, in police departments. And then the 1972 Equal Employment Opportunity Act extended that protection to the state and local levels, which made it possible for more women to become involved in police work. <music>